Hi guys, it's Tips Tuesday. So um, I'm here today to talk about uh, food intolerance reactions, uh, histamine intolerance, of course, and leaky gut or intestinal permeability, which is the proper name. So um, the majority of people who have histamine intolerance and uh, other food reactions have got some form of intestinal permeability. Now, this is one of the reasons why we often find that different people reacting to different foods, it's not necessarily always the foods that are listed as histamine intolerance. The progression is often that we start with one food reaction or histamine intolerance. We may have had gluten intolerance in the past, um, or you know we have reactions just to high histamine foods. And if this is not addressed over time, it can increase and we can find that we are getting further reactions, often to foods that are not necessarily on a histamine list. They may be any other type of food. So I'll explain a little about how this works and why. If you can imagine your gut, it is a tube that is um, as long as a football field, but it is squashed into your body. It is our one and only protection against the outside world when it comes to anything that goes into our mouth. We're talking about food, bacteria, toxins, and anything else. So um, this tube is one cell wall thick. And that single cell wall is also then covered with a layer of mucus. In our small intestine, it's quite a thick layer of mucus. And in our colon, it's a, a bit thinner, it's a single layer. So for the way that we get protection in our body is through firstly this layer of mucus and secondly the integrity of the gut wall and our cells in our gut are banged up against each other like this. So we have these two cells sitting here like this and they do what we call on a normal daily basis in a healthy gut selective permeability. So these two cells will sit here and as told by the body, they will allow food particles through. And these food particles will have been chewed well and digested well. So they will be very, 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 very small little protein fragments. And they come through. So normally, the good ones come through. They're small. It's fine. The immune system deals with them. No problems at all. In a leaky gut, this wall is not together there's a gap and the proteins from the foods are coming through this gap and they are often not fully digested so they're not tiny tiny little proteins that are the body wants to get through they're often a little bit bigger and they're often also uh, proteins from bacteria as well as from foods and they come through this gap and way more of them come through way more often than they're supposed to. It's not supposed to be like that. When they come through, they actually go straight into our bloodstream. And from our, in our bloodstream, our immune system instantly will start to react to them. So that is one of the reasons why um, we are getting food reactions to things that are not necessarily a histamine related food, because that food protein could be a from corn, it could be from rice, wheat, you know, meat, any other thing. It's not necessarily um, a histamine molecule. So when those foods get into our bloodstream, our body, our immune system will react to them. And how our immune system works is it, it's supposed to find these things that are not supposed to be there. And it's supposed to actually remember what they are and react to them and try and protect us. The problem we have is because we have this leaky gut and there's this gap between the cells, 
the food particles keep coming through, the body will react again and again and again. So, as well as that, that can impact the histamine reactions because we also have the mast cells which are in our gut, they're sitting in our gut, and they're also being triggered by this reaction. The reactions will, in the immune system, then talk to the mast cells and they will release histamine. So you get, you still can get the histamine reactions from non-histamine containing foods. Right, so that's kind of how that can work. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to, one, improve the mucus layer, which is our first level of protection, and then two, heal that leaky gut. Now, the leaky gut can take quite a long time to heal. Uh, and it depends a lot on how bad your gut is in the first place. So you can do a test. There's an intestinal permeability test called a lactose mannitol test, which is usually performed by a practitioner such as myself. And in that test, we can see how bad it is, how much of these lactose and mannitol are getting into the body, which should not, right? So we can do that test to see how bad it is. And then we can address both um, the, the gut healing and the mucus layer with supplementation, intermittent fasting, and uh, removing any food that is currently irritating us. So we'll probably talk about that one next time because this is getting pretty long. But if you've got any more questions about what I mean, if anything's not clear, please leave a comment below and I'll try and explain this better. Uh, I also will try and use some pictures, uh, which can make it a little bit clearer as well. So um, thanks for listening. Uh, if you would like to have some more information on histamine foods, there's a low histamine food list that I have made that you can get. And there is also a uh, low histamine four week meal plan, which has all the recipes, shopping lists, and everything you need to do a four week elimination diet. It's also wheat and dairy free. So um, thanks for listening and let me know what you think. Bye.